Hi and welcome back to another Amazon selling video. Today I'm just going to talk about a question that I get asked a lot or it's not a direct ask question, it's more of the advice I give which is open a help ticket. So a lot of the questions I can't answer because I can't see into your account and I don't know what's going on and I always say open a help ticket and then I'm usually followed up with how do you do that. So I just thought I would go ahead and make a video in case you were wondering how you ask Amazon a question. First, you do not have to feel like you can't ask Amazon. You can open a help ticket. You can open one every day if you want. You can open a few every day. Like there's no like bad thing about opening a help ticket. If you need help, just go ahead and ask. I am not an expert and while I would love to help you answer all your questions, like I said, I can't always answer them all and Amazon has a better idea because they can actually see in your account and see what's going on. My first piece of advice, if anything ever looks weird in your account or you don't know what's going on, open a help ticket. I recently had an item that kept getting a price error so I was like okay and I would fix the price. It's something I've sold before and then finally now it's in my stranded and it doesn't have a reason. It says unknown. Okay well I can't do anything with unknown so I opened a help ticket and I'm waiting to hear what the issue is. Always if there's something weird just open a help ticket. On the last thing before I move into how you actually do it is they are not always the best with their answers. Sometimes it's like a generic copy paste answer and you're like but I said all this so you just gotta like keep the conversation going and I'll show you how to do that and ask again another way. If you ever have something where they're like not getting through to you, then I usually just type, I need this to be escalated, I want someone else to look at it and when you type in that word escalate, it gets a response like that. Probably shouldn't overuse that, but if you ever do like, I've only done it once, but it happened like that. So to start, it's over in the right hand corner, right? It's right. So it's over the word help, it's between messages and settings, you just click on help and then it takes you to this page. Oh, I should say that Amazon often changes how this works. It's changed I think twice in the last year. It's changed like three or four times since I started selling. So just know that it could look different depending on when you're watching this video, but in essence, it's the same thing of where you're trying to get to. So you, to start, you have these six boxes here where it's like trying to drill down and like get to the part of your question. I just cruise on past these and I go to get more support, this third option here in the bottom. So then it's gonna open and what do you need help with? I always need help with selling on Amazon because I don't really do any advertising, so I'm always clicking this one. So before it used to be like you would drill down to what you wanted, which I think is now those six boxes. So now it just does this. So I'm going to type in, I need help figuring out why my ASIN is stranded. It's reading your words. And so it's going to pop up now these things. Is this what you need? Is this what you need? Is this what you need? And if you need help with that, you can click them and then they're going to try and help you here. And it wants me to put in my ASIN. What I always do is I go ahead and say, no, that's not really what it is. And I want to contact you because I want to create a ticket where I have someone read my words. Obviously I don't have an ASIN, I probably should have copied one, but you would put an ASIN. I always either have two tabs open, one with your managed inventory with a stranded item or whatever the problem is, or you just copy the ASIN and then you would input it here. So now when you say you want to contact them, it's basically going to start a ticket with your first message. So you want to make sure you have your whole message there. Again, I always copy it just because I don't want something to happen and I typed it all out and now I have to retype it. So I will just quickly copy it in case something happens and then I don't have to retype it all. So then it's like, okay, create a case. I would put a SKU if I have it. You can do email and put your email in and they'll respond via email. If you want to talk to someone right now, you just go ahead and hit phone and you put your number in and then it's going to automatically connect you. So you'll talk to someone right now, which is really cool. I've done this once and I didn't realize that it happened so quickly. It, like literally someone called me right now. So that's an option too. If you'd rather have someone on the phone, I'll get into why you should do that in a little bit when I talk about removing bad seller feedback. So if I went ahead and finished that out, it would create a case. I would get an email and it would just be in my log. So now when you go to help here in the corner, the first page now we're back to this you can go ahead and hit case log and that's going to open all your different case logs now the reason i wanted to show you this is to go if you need more help on it because if amazon answers it they're going to consider it closed but if it's not closed for you you need to keep the conversation going so you would just click here on the case get more help i need help with this one or a different one it's usually this one and you would just click this and then it opens up the screen where you can type your next message to Amazon. That's how you keep the case going and like I said if you don't do it they are going to consider it closed so if you do need more help you should definitely do that. I think you have three or four days to finish the case so if it's an ongoing thing you have to keep on it otherwise you're going to start a whole new case which is not the end of the world but it is kind of annoying when you already had a case going. Okay so now the other part of this video what happens when you get bad seller feedback? Ugh there is nothing worse than bad seller feedback. 
especially if it's something you did not do. To see your feedback, which you should do often, I usually do it once a week or a couple times a week, honestly, you wanna have good seller feedback because that makes the customers wanna buy from you and it also helps Amazon give you the buy box. So the goal is to have it like 97% or better. Unfortunately, mine is not because of some bad seller feedback. I didn't know these little tricks of what to do. So hopefully I'm going to help you out now so that you don't have the same problems I had. So here under performance, you go ahead and just click feedback and it takes you to your feedback page. So if you had a bad review, it has these little drop downs. So Amazon's getting smart now. I didn't have to do anything on this one. Amazon just automatically flagged it and removed it, which is great. So now it's not being counted against me. You would go over here to the actions and you would hit request removal. When you hit request removal, Amazon is going to go through it all with their little automated system and see if it is flagged as anything that should be removed. I feel like now that they're doing it on their own, that it probably isn't going to be automatically removed, which is not the end of the world, but take note because there are certain steps and limitations to what they'll remove. If it ever talks about price or that you're price gouging or they could have bought it somewhere cheaper, Amazon is supposed to remove those because that is not anything about you as a seller. Seller feedback is literally supposed to be about you as a seller not the product you're selling it can't be a product review so they'll remove it if it's a product review if it's price if you did fba it's really hard to get a bad review because amazon's doing all the customer focus part of it they're supplying the customer service they're supplying the shipping all of that so it should be pretty easy although they're not as easy as they used to be after you ask for it to automatically removed if they say no you have one more shot so use it very wisely and I mean very wisely because once they say no again, you're kind of screwed and you have to have that bad review on your account. I would always make my case in written format and I would say, hey, they're talking about price, which is against your terms of what they can review it for and just kind of break it out to them on, in writing. But now that I've talked to my friend who tried to do it in writing and she got a no and so she called them and they said, oh, I wish you would have called us because we could have removed this, but now there's nothing we can do about it. So now my advice is if you get a bad review, you ask for automatically be taken off and Amazon says no, go ahead and open a case and hit that call button and actually talk to a person to see if they'll remove it because you'll have a lot better chance in talking than you will in writing where they can just say, sorry, no. The last thing I wanna say on seller reviews is that you have 90 days to take action. So you should be looking often. As soon as you see a negative one, you wanna take action and get it off because after 90 days, they won't remove it anyways. So if you have stuff that is within the last 90 days that is bad, definitely go ahead and try and get that taken off. If it's past 90 days, you can't really do anything about it now. The good thing is that your review rating that shows up on Amazon when customers are shopping is just for the last year. So my lifetime reviews are great but the last year because I had some bad ones last November it's not the best and it's bringing my number down the good thing is that it will fall off in November so I mean it'll go up then but yeah that's how I remove bad reviews and ask for a case on Amazon I hope this video was helpful to you if you guys need any other help and want to help get on gating or join my bolo group all the links for that are below thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you back here for another Amazon selling video